Hi everyone, and welcome to the cardiovascular portion of the course. My name is Stephen Bagley, and I will be your instructor. The main objective for this part of the course is going to be to understand the following topics and how they are most likely to be tested on the USMLE Step 1. Firstly, there's cardiac physiology, including fluid dynamics, the cardiac cycle, and electrophysiology. Then we'll discuss basic heart sounds uh, and the ones that are most likely to show up on test day. We'll talk about the biochemistry of lipids, ischemic heart disease and various cardiomyopathies, congenital heart disease, and lastly we'll end with a brief overview of the different types of vasculitis. In this first lecture, we're going to talk about specifically beta and alpha adrenergic receptors because these receptors play an important role in the cardiovascular system. We'll discuss cardiac output, resistance, pressure, and flow, and lastly, the cardiac function curve, which is a very highly tested topic on step one. So to begin, let's talk about uh, the adrenergic receptors. Okay, now these uh, are four types. There's the alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2. Okay, now these are the receptors that are involved with the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, each of these uh, is a G-protein linked receptor. Now what's important to remember is that each one of these receptors has a different class of G protein associated with it. Now for the alpha-1, it's a Q class G protein. For alpha-2, it's an I. For beta-1 and beta-2, it's an S class G protein. Now the way that I tend to remember this is through the mnemonic KISS, but instead of K-I-S-S, -S, it's Q-I-S-S. -S. Okay, and that, as we just said, corresponds to alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2 uh, G proteins, respectively. Now, the alpha-1 receptor, firstly, remember that this receptor, when it's activated, almost always causes contraction of smooth muscle, okay? And that contraction of smooth muscle will have a different effect depending on where in the body it's acting. So if an alpha-1 uh, receptor is activated on a blood vessel, it causes vasoconstriction, okay? And this is very important uh, for increasing your blood pressure when you need to. Activation of the alpha-1 receptor causes contraction of the pupillary dilator muscle, so it causes dilation of the pupil, which is also known as mydriasis. And it also causes increased intestinal and bladder contraction. Now the alpha-2 receptor uh, is actually an I-class G protein, as we said, and I stands for inhibitory. And this should be easy to remember because it actually causes a decrease in sympathetic outflow and a decrease in insulin release. Now the beta-1 receptor is an S-class, as we said, uh, and mostly the beta-1 receptor is going to act in the heart muscle itself. Uh, an activation of a beta-1 receptor causes an increase in heart rate and an increase in contractility. And in the periphery, it causes an increase in renin release, but again, most of its effect is gonna be in the heart. Lastly, the beta-2 receptor, also an S-type G protein, uh, actually causes vasodilation in the periphery, okay, so the exact opposite effect of the alpha-1 receptor, and it causes bronchodilation in the lungs, so which is very, very important uh, when we're talking about diseases like asthma. A few other effects of the beta-2 include increased lipolysis, increased insulin release, and a decrease in uterine tone. And in fact, we use beta-2 agonists sometimes to decrease uterine tone. So if we're trying to stop a woman from going into premature labor, we might administer a beta-2 agonist. Okay, so with those uh, basic receptors in mind, we can now proceed with our discussion of the cardiovascular system.